Entries in the bestiary provide additional information about monsters, including tips and strategies for how best to fight them. Okay, but I want to read the bestiary first. Griffins. I'm a griffin. No, really. So yeah, like, up here is my weight limit. That's as much as you can carry. Obviously level. And how much money I have. Vulnerable against grape shot bomb. Hybrid oil. And the art sign. That's nice to know. Griffins were once only found high in the mountains where they would hunt marmots and wild goats. When humans encroached on their lands, however, griffins soon discovered a new source of much more plentiful and easier caught prey, cows, sheep, and shepherds. Though still wary of main roads and towns where folk with the means to hire a witcher are like to dwell, whoops, that's a typo. These half-eagle, half-wildcat creatures have gone from rarities to oft-encountered pests known throughout the northern realms. Especially hated are the subspecies known as royal griffins and arch griffins. So they're a hybrid. Oh, here we go. Ghouls. Ghouls and graviers are hard to describe. In part, they resemble humans, yet on the whole, they are the utter negation of all that is human. Though they have arms and legs like men, they walk on all fours like dogs or badgers. Though they have eerily familiar faces, one searches them in vain for any sign of sentiment, reason, or even a spark of consciousness. They are driven by one thing and one thing only, an insatiable craving for human flesh. Vulnerable against... Necrophage oil. Surprise! Okay, fine. Cyrilla. Cyrilla Fiona Ellen Rhiannon. What can I possibly say about her? That we call her Ciri for short, that she was born in 1251, that she has ashen hair and a scar on her cheek. All true, and that's the Cyrilla I know best, the one I first laid eyes upon those many years ago. The one who seemed thoroughly, well, not ordinary, but certainly not as extraordinary as she in fact is. For Cyrilla is also a highly skilled witcher, heiress to several thrones, the last bearer of the Elder Blood, a powerful source endowed with exceptional magic talent, and the Lady of Time and Space. Her hair color and date of birth seem rather incidental now, don't they? I could also tell you she is Geralt's adopted daughter, but that would be a gross simplification. Ciri is much more. She is his destiny, his unexpected child, someone bound to the Witcher by fate's most inextricably tangled fetters. Following age-old Witcher tradition, Geralt took Ciri to Kaer Morin when she came into his care. There, he and Vesemir taught her in the ways of the professional monster slayer. It was then that her magic talents were first revealed, and they discovered she was a source. Ciri's gift oh crap, proved <laughs> a curse as well. Because of it, she would one day have to hide from the entire world. Even Geralt. <laughs> Dandelion. Uh, I think most of these entries are written by Dandelion. So he's essentially writing about himself. Because <laughs> that's how it was in Witcher 2 as well. Um, he basically, he, he's like the in-universe writer of all of the character entries. Uh, so yeah, I would wager that any I would wager anyone that you, dear reader, are a person of culture and taste, and therefore already familiar with me, Dandelion, and the role I am to play in the following tale. Nevertheless, allow me to sketch a few lines by way of self-portrait for the sake of thoroughness, and in the event you have spent much of the last half century in some dark corner where the light of my star has yet to reach. He's quite a guy. 
Born in 1229, a talented poet and troubadour, a graduate of Oxenford Academy, a frequent performer at royal courts, an unequaled lover appreciated and in some cases adored by ladies worldwide, a skilled negotiator, and a stirring orator. Such is the image of the bard Dandelion, as painted by his friends and promoters. <laughs> This image is, of course, somewhat over-bright in its coloring. I personally prefer to think of myself as a dedicated artist, enthralled to his muse, one whose work has benefited immeasurably from the fact that I was, am, and forever will remain a close friend and steadfast companion to the Witcher Geralt. It is his fate I chronicle in this present work, and his story which I s shall sing till the end of my days. Eskel all witchers have a great deal in common, but with Eskel and Geralt, the similarities are particularly striking. They first met as two boys of the same age, swinging wooden swords at Kaer Morin. Then They then went through an ordeal together, the first round of selections, the murderous changes, the trial of the grasses, and training on the gauntlet, the witcher's daunting obstacle course. They also received hidings together for more than one act of childish delinquency. Haha. <laughs> When they became adults, they walked the path separately, but still reconvened at Kaer Morin nearly every winter to wait out the cold, drink to their successes, and remember fallen comrades. Though Eskel never gained Geralt's renown, he equaled the White Wolf in experience and carried out his contracts with care and efficiency. Death had almost taken him many times during his hunts, yet in an ironic twist the hideous scar on his face came not from a monster's claw, but from the blade of Deidre Adamant, his highly unpredictable, unexpected child. Geralt of Rivia Many cannot fathom the friendship Geralt of Rivia and I, Dandelion, have shared all these years. When we first began breaking bread together, spiteful tongues said he'd be better off cutting my throat and dumping my body in a hollow tree, before I provoked someone else into doing the same to us both. Those individuals spoke out of pure jealousy, for Geralt was my dearest friend, a fact which he gave ample evidence of on numerous occasions. I could say a great deal about that world-famous monster hunter, the man known in elder speech as Gwynblade, or, in our younger, yet no less noble tongue, as the White Wolf. For Geralt of Rivia is a truly exceptional individual. Aww. A brief encounter might tempt one to label him a mere swinger of swords, a simple monster catcher, a rough-and-tumble practitioner of a dirty trade, but peer closer and you will soon discover he is a man of unplumbed depths, unique views, and vast world-spanning experience. On the surface he is introverted, tight-lipped, one might even say gruff, but underneath lies an overflowing sea of goodwill, good humor, and an honest readiness to help his friends be it with a bit of sound advice or the masterful application of his blade. Setting aside cumbersome false modesty, I can say that I know his story better than any man alive. I was with him through hard times and good, helping with wise advice, warm words, and razor wit. As a result, I am a vital part of his story, both in its earlier and present portions. It is thus my duty to continue my chronicle and, for the benefit of future generations, put in writing the next chapter of his deeds and exploits. Lambert. The youngest among the witchers of Kaer Morin, and perhaps the last ever trained within its walls, by the start of our tale Lambert had proven his chops many times over, having hunted down many a mighty beast and traversed nearly all the continent's realms several times over. Yet he had also developed a reputation for arrogance and sardonic humor, and his gruff and at times excessively blunt manner would ir could irritate even his fellow witchers of the school of the wolf. Whatever his vices, it went without saying that Lambert would brave the fires of any hell for his companions. Vesemir was the oldest living member of the wolf school, and most likely the oldest witcher of any school on the continent. About as long in years as the ruins of Kaer Morin themselves, and, though eternally complaining about his creaky bones, this master of the witcher trade gave no thought to a well-deserved retirement. Gray but still spry, he continued to ply the monster-hunting trade into his golden years, effectively, too, as he'd seen more beasts than all his students put together. 
A harsh and demanding instructor in Geralt's youth, over the years, he had become something of an adoptive father and mentor to the other witchers, always ready to help with sage advice and steady hands. In the spring of 1272, when our story begins, Vesemir had joined Geralt on his search for Yennefer, trekking with him through war-ravaged Temeria. Yennefer of Vengerberg. The Witcher first met the raven-haired sorceress a good twenty years back. Their friendship and the feelings between them were born of a common adventure involving a genie and a wish granted to Geralt that intertwined their fates inextricably. In the time since then, their relationship had, however, been quite stormy. Rich in ups and downs, crises and breakups, Geralt and Yennefer's love provides irrefutable proof of the thesis that opposites attract. A few years ago, Geralt and Yennefer had, after a long separation full of adventures for them both, gotten back together again. Their moment of repose was interrupted by the wild hunt, which took Yennefer captive. The Witcher set out at once to save her, but lost his memory while doing so. When he finally recovered it, he immediately set off once more on his quest to find his beloved sorceress. Okay. Well, let's uh, go. Horsey. Oh, here we go. Hold left shift without steering to automatically follow its path. So, a griffin this close to the village? Strange. My thoughts exactly. In a forest to the mountains, sure, but here? You're near the main road. Maybe it's the war. Corpses everywhere, the stench of blood, burnt flesh. Drives monsters crazy sometimes. Men, too. We need to watch ourselves in White Orchard. And we should leave as soon as we learn anything. You're nearing a village. Don't disturb the peace. Remember, town guards and hired watchmen won't tolerate theft, and also won't look kindly on you accosting others. Local residents often erect notice boards near settlements such as villages and cities. These are marked on your map. Examine them to learn about contracts, work for witchers, and local happenings. Take it easy. Like crickets. You chew them, or swallow them whole. My grand told me about Smith's boy. Old E to Lad was missing one day, so folk nabbed a witchman that was hunting nearby. Started poking him, asking. When he started twisting and squirming, so wham, bam, they knocked his head off. <laughs> so it was, except he was some drowner okay. that sat on the kid. Witcher had nothing to do with it. What did the folk do? It ain't like they could have sewed his head back on. Looking Worthy for trouble. They laid his corpse to rest. Hush, hush, in a crypt. Well, that's interesting. The wild hunt in the heavens always heralds war. Yeah. Good point, good point. So, okay, should we... I don't know if I want to go to the Freak. tavern or if I want to wander around. Hey, don't call me that. Boydemar, will you raise a glass with me? It's Dervan now. D-E-R-V-A-N. Not Goydemar. May the sun shine upon what? you. What do you mean? I know what they named you at your cutting. What kind of name is that anyway? Dervan. Nilfgaardian. My gran was from Nazaire. Oh, so that's how it is. Then by my leave, I Master I'd raise her. Dervin, may the gold sun guide you far away from my land. What do you say to that? We'll talk about this later. Damn deer have stripped the bark off the trees again. Here's a notice board. Let's see what's on the notice board before we talk it's to Vesemir. It's raining, it's pouring, and Bromir snoring. He bumped his head when he went to bed and wet himself the morning. Aside, Everything's to gonna be fine. Was nice. Who taught you that? Everybody's talking, man. Okay, here we go. Geralt has learned from experience to keep a close eye on his surroundings as he travels, for he never knows when he'll run into someone or something of interest. A damsel in distress, a merchant peddling rare wares, or a nest of pesky monsters. <laughs> Such locations are marked on your map with the following icons. Cool. Uh, Jetty! Now listen carefully. 
You're never to sing that rhyme again. Never. And you're not to play with Chetty no more. Ooh, somebody's in trouble. Okay. The New Order. This Thursday, all peasants living nearby are invited to come listen to Captain Peter Sar Gwenleave speak on the subject of laws soon to be introduced in these lands by writ of our most gracious sovereign, Emir Var Emrys. Attendance is not obligatory, but every resident of White, White Orchard should partake of this opportunity to learn what rights they will enjoy and duties they will have under the new order. Good folk, you no longer live in a barbarous land where every man does as he sees fit. You are now part of the great empire of Nilfgaard. Nilfgaardian law now protects you, yet it also ascribes you new obligations. Imperial forces have brought you to the torch of enlightenment. Grab hold of it, and your dark age shall soon give way to a bright new era. So yeah, what's happened recently is the empire, of, uh, the Nilfgaardian empire has um, invaded all of these once sort of independent kingdoms and taken them over in the past uh, couple of years. Um, this has happened just since the last game, the end of the last game, like between them. So now we're dealing with Nilfgaard. I'm just going to take everything. Looking to borrow a plow. Hey lads, there any among you can lend me a plow? Thing is, mine smacked up against a stone in my field so hard it bent halfways, and may a fiend take me if I know how to fix it or plow my field without it. Wrong. Volunteers wanted. By order of Captain Peter Sargwenleave, it let it hereby be known that enlistment in the Imperial Army is now open. Recruits will be provided with room, board, and regular pay. Yet the greatest payment of all is the honor of serving Emir Var Emrys, Dethwin Adan Yin Karp, I don't know how to say that, Morvid. Once enlisted, recruits will be trained under the tutelage of the Empire's greatest strategists. Recruits' families will be assured sufficient sustenance for the entire time of their service. In the case of their death on the field of glory, they will receive a lifelong pension. Good way to get people involved. Or make the peasants angry. Nilf Guardian Lessons. Eh. Don't understand what you just read? No wonder. It's in Nilf Guardian. Okay. And soon, half the world will be speaking this mysterious tongue. So you'd best start learning it now, and yours truly can help you with that for a very modest fee. Of course. Uh, contract. Devil by the Well. Here we go. Is the actual contract. Good folk. I know there's a war on, and every man's got trouble of his own, but perhaps there's one of you who could help a father in need. You all surely know the well in the ruined village and the devil that guards it with a jealous fury, and if you don't know, well, come ask, and I'll tell you all about it. Whoever drives that monster away from the well will get a fat purse full of gold. Just don't tarry, for it's an urgent matter. Odalon. And this one. Brother missing. Bastian, my brother went off to fight the Black Ones. I have reason to think he stood in the great battle nearby. He's not returned to this day, like many others, you'll say, and you'll be in the right. But if he fell, I, and I know it's like he did, I'd give him up to the ground I'd give him up to the ground the least, like our fathers have done always. I'd bury him neath the barrow where our parents lie, not leave his corpse to be ate by the corpsers prowling the battleground. So I seek a man brave, able with a sword, and willing to venture out with me to find Bastien. I won't pay much, for I have not much to give, but I'm not stingy with gratitude and sure to show it a plenty. Any man willing to help look for a raised hut along the road to White Orchard just near the bridge. I've made camp there. Dune Vildenvert. But Chetty's my best mate! Is much of interest to be found in the world's dense forests and fog clad swamps. Whenever you press. Whenever. You peruse a notice board. Question markers will appear on your mini-map to indicate potentially interesting places. Seek them out to learn what secrets they hold. Nice. Chetty's a little fool. He'll get us all killed. A world map. I see you with him space. again, and you'll regret it. This, this dude here, that's an available quest. That's my currently tracked quest. To talk to Vesemir at the inn. Um, 
there's the ford, there's an undiscovered location, an undiscovered look. So yeah, I think all these are just going to be question marks until I find them. There's a ransacked village. I can tab back to my current location at any point, that's cool. Got all these filters too, so. That's cool. Where am I again? This is. This is just like. I think this is still like the tutorial level, basically. And I'm already just like, there's so many things to look at. Like, this is a big map. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. See, and this is like... There's Skellige, there's Novigrad, Vela in No Man's Land, Royal Palace in Vizima. Like, cripes. There are um, Kermorans up there. Oh my gosh. Kermorin, meaning keep of the Sea of Yore, is home to a school of witchers. Years ago, the keep was destroyed and its inhabitants murdered during a massive pogrom. Currently, only a handful of witchers winter here before setting out again on the path. So E opens the region map. Oh, so this is... Oh, cool. But I want to do this. Oh, I can go back and forth from my current position to my selected, um... Okay, well. What do I want to do? Let's talk to this person here who has a quest for us. Is this guy? Yeah. Yes! Of what? Up and smoke! What's your problem, Richard. dude? What happened here? Oh, got a wee bit chilly the night, so I set fire to my forge. Got it nice and roaring. Roasted some wieners. <laughs> what do you think happened, dimwit? Some bugger set a light me, me workshop. I've lost everything. Everything! Well, sorry. Um... <sighs> I'm, you know, I, usually when I play these games, I, I, I try to be decent most of the time. Like, sometimes I'm a little bit rude, but, like, there's no reason to be like, don't insult me like an asshole, so... Sorry. Any suspects? Whole damned village. I've lived here half a century. Thought they saw me as one of their own. But everything changed when the Black Ones came. I'm the only smith around, so I got to service their garrison. Bang dents out of plate, shoe horses. That sort of thing. Nilf guardians don't pay me a bloody copper. Just give me supplies and orders. But humans can't fathom that. They think I'm getting rich off their misfortune. That I sleep on a pile of gold like a plowing dragon. They've stopped talking to me. Spit when I pass. And now this. We'll end the conversation. Okay. Psh, well, I can sure help you. I can that. find your arsonist, provided you're willing to pay. <sighs> I've not much left, but I'll give you all if you bring me that horse in, so that he gets what he deserves. The night of the fire, I heard movement outside my hut. Went out to see if I could find any tracks, but found nothing. But then I haven't got cat eyes, have I? Good luck. Yeah, I guess I do have cat eyes. Let's track that. Oh. That's not what I need to do. Oh, 
That's not what I need to do either. Um. Oh, it's the backspace, right? Okay. I'm. I'm. It takes me a while to get these things figured out. So I take my time in the tutorial, so I'm sorry if this takes a while and you want to get me. If you want me to get right to the plot or whatever, that's cool, but I'm working on some other stuff. Um. Right. I want to track that one cuz we're going to work on we're going to work on this fire starter. I need to go behind the forge. Yeah. <laughs> I got a little circle. Oh, that's nasty. I know there's points of interest. I just Okay. Um Got a lump of bread today. Good for you, kid. Now, well, see, there's a. Oh, wait a second. There's something. Shavings from a tinderbox. Arsonist must have lit his torch here. Tossed it on the roof, then fled through the orchard. Boot prints. A man's. Large. See, this is a good way to learn the Witcher senses. Stinks of piss and vodka. Uh, okay. So, okay. I'm just gonna explain now. When you use the Witcher senses, and I've seen this on a couple of streams, um, the yellow stuff is like anything that you can um, loot. Or gather, and red stuff. Um, anything that glows red, Kings like do that, the fighting, is. But peasants do the dying. Yep, they sure do. Um, the red stuff is quest related. So the yellow stuff is just Damn like dear, ra random lootables. Again. So that's just like a looter. Like this is just alchemy ingredients. And I am obsessive about looting, so I apologize in advance because I loot a lot. Hi, Geralt. You're hot. I'm standing right in the middle of this thing. Okay. Well, anyway, well, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm still, I'm, I'm so bad at this early on. You don't even know. Okay. <gasps> Excuse you, lady. Okay. Took off his boots and went in the water. Probably wanted to cover his trail. Smart. Smart. So... So where do I think- where do I think he went? Took off his boots and went in the water. Probably right. wanted to cover his trail. I go. So, okay, he went into the water to try and cover his tracks. That was smart. That was smart of him. Um. I'm 
What is this? Maybe it's here. Ah, yeah. Something jumped out of the rushes. Mm. Drowners. But he managed to escape. Oh, here we go. His boots are on the ground there, so he's running. Oops. Tracks lead back to the village. Oh, this is cool. This is so cool. I'm bleeding, but not badly. Surface wound. Okay, that's cool. Freak. I can't. Trail ends here, but I'll recognize him by his wounds. Look for someone with wounds dealt by drowners using your Witcher senses. <laughs> okay, that's gross. That is gross. I wonder if I can do this without getting into trouble. I'm gonna save before I do this. Saves created with this version of the game. That's okay, because I don't have a previous game version. So, yes. Is there a quick save? I can't save my game right now. Usable I dried fruit and nuts. Okay, sure. So no one's attacking me because I'm stealing from them. Okay. Well... Excuse you. Wow, you were nasty. I can't... You know, I'm not talking to you. Okay, cool, cool. That's, that's, that's fine. Looking for trouble. Well, you know what? I think maybe you might be. Um. What about My dad you? had a sword once too. That's cool. Oh, yes, white myrtle. Um. All right. All right. Cool. Hmm. No. Got a lump of bread today. Use your, look for some of the wounds dealt by drowners. Using your Witcher senses. Oh. <laughs> so gross. You are so gross. Oh, hey, look Drowner at you. Drowner claw marks. It's gotta be him. Nasty wound. Run into a drowner. What the fuck do you care? Whoa. Our arsonist's a charmer, too. Come on. Smith wants to talk to you. I not talk to a non-human. Sons of bitches all, and dwarves are the worst. Greedy little magpies do anything really? but gold, they will. <laughs> they forge the blades the black ones put to our throats. Am I not right? No, you're not. Listen, we can work this out man to man. I give you gold, you don't turn me in. Ugh. My mum died a while back and I sold her tools. I've spent some, but what's left is yours. Um, this is the thing about the Witcher. You have to make a lot of weird, you have to make a lot of decisions and you're never quite sure what's the correct one because it's super morally gray. Um, so, Sometimes you'll do things that you think is maybe the right thing to do, and then later on it kind of blows up in your face. Even s even the sort of minor decisions or decisions that seem minor on the face of it can kind of come back to bite you in the ass later. So, um, you know, I mean, it's like one of those things where this guy will be grateful. He might promise never to commit arson again, but he might go back on his word. If I turn him into this dwarf, I'll have the dwarf's gratitude. Probably not much else. But the dwarf will like me. 
which means I'll make myself, I'll start, probably, I would assume, start building a reputation as a friend to um, non-humans, dwarves and elves and other um, groups that are all um, marginalized in this world. And as a witcher, a lot of people lump witchers in with non-humans as kind of a mar one of those marginalized groups or those groups that are kind of separate from the rest. Um, or I can sort of let him go scot-free, go back to the dwarf, say, ah, sorry, I couldn't find him or whatever, and then um, the dwarf will be probably be mad at me. So, um, you know, I, I think ultimately I'm going to go, I'm going to turn him in to the dwarf because he committed a crime. And he should really, I think, personally, I think people should pay for their crimes when they commit them. This guy burned down the dwarf's house, he had no reason to do it. Um, you know, the dwarf isn't, it's not, the dwarf is not a, a collaborator by choice, <laughs> certainly. Um, is, you know, his own ignorance led him to commit this crime, and, you know, he should probably come, he should probably pay for it. So, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Magpies and dwarves might be greedy, but I'm not. Can't buy me. Then I'll <laughs> beat your fucking mug to a pulp! Uh-oh. Oh, options marked will, with the sign will you make use of the Axie sign. This sign influences people's minds, causing them to act according to your will. To, stub to charm more stubborn individuals who would otherwise resist during a conversation, invest in the delusion ability in the character panel. Interesting. So, it's basically your Jedi mind trick, the Axie sign. Let's try it. Let's just see. Calm down. Now follow me. Nice. Nice. Okay, so... We can head back to the blacksmith shop. I... I gotta... I think those Apologize. plums are wreaking havoc on my gut. I gotta go. Apologize. You coming, dude? Come on, dude. Let's go. We gotta... Come on with me? Heard what Yavora gets up to with her man. What do I know? Let's go. Would you raise a glass with me? Hey, it's Sherman Sherman now. D-E-R-V-A-N. Not Goidemar. You are what? so slow. What do you mean? Oh my god, these escorts. I know what they named you at your cutting. What kind what of is name is that anyway? Dervin. Nilfgaardian. Come my on. gran was from Nazaire. Oh, so that's how the it physics is. engine then in this game is so awesome. May the gold sun guide you far like, away from my land. Look at the physics engine. Also, from what I understand, Geralt's beard grows in real time. So every so often, unless you want a big, gnarly, scraggly beard, you have to get a shave because it grows. It grows. His beard grows. Not that I mind the occasional gnarly, scraggly beard, but, you know, getting a shave is kind of cool. The plague! Ooh. Excuse you. <sighs> Come on. Seriously? You're all... Enchanted now. Let's go. Let's go. Move it along. Move it along! Okay, dude. Okay, let's go. We're almost there. We are almost... Look at this, look at this. He's right here. Let's go. Aha. Up and at him. Hmm? What? what? What's going on? Here you go. One village pyromaniac in the flesh. <laughs> Nap! You! I knew your mom for years! Charge Terneria Coppa! This is how you repay me! I've had enough. Hey, soldier! A minute of your time, please. No! Willis, I beg you! I I I, I was drunk! Yes. Didn't know what I was doing! This is gonna be I've rough. I've told you, Master Willis. 
We will help you rebuild once reinforcements come. The supplies have been ordered. Not what this is about, mate. This here's the arsonist. A witcher found him. The forge was important to the garrison. Destroying it was sabotage. Mm. No trial needed here. Just a tree. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, that's that's not going to do. That's not going to go over well with the locals. Villagers will really love you now. Well, no, I don't give a flying fuck about them. You know, mm -hmm. Good point. I hated the black ones at first like everybody else did. Now I'm thinking they might just bring order to this place. Teach these layabouts some manners. But enough about that. Your reward. And Interesting. I managed to save some things from the fire. Anvil still holds, so I'm sure I can bang something out on it. You need anything, let me know. Give you a good price. Hmm. Well, that's something. That's something. Let me. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I keep forgetting them. I have how to. All the menus. Okay. Let's look at my character sheet. What do I have? I don't have any points available yet. You know, you know. Player stats. Oh, nice. Detailed statistics. Oh, I even have the total play time. Whoa! Okay, well, that's cool, that's cool, um, what else do I want to do? Suggested level two, okay, that's a contract. Um, that's cool though, they have suggested levels. Um, I, I know that, um, from uh, some of the things I've been reading and seeing that um, there is no level scaling of either monsters or quests in this game. So, yeah. If you run into something that's too hard, you might just have to run away and come back later. Um, so that's cool that they put suggested levels there if they're higher. Um, so the Devil by the Well contract is suggested level 2. I'm still level 1. I'm 360 of 1,000 XP right now until level 2, so I clearly need to get more XP before I can do that. That's probably something I'll want to wait for. But it looks like this missing an action quest is probably okay. As it turned out, Geralt was not alone in searching White Orchard for a lost loved one. The Witcher also found the notice of a peasant who was seeking his brother. The brother had left home to take up arms against Nilfgaard. The forces of the North and the Black Ones had then clashed in a great battle near the brother's home village, and the peasant had not heard from his brother since, so he wants to find his brother. I think I'm going to talk to that guy and see before I continue the sort of main quest line. Find Dune Vildenvert. So yeah, they call Nilfgaardians the Black Ones, and they're like an invading empire. Um, they're sort of like, I guess you could say maybe they're sort of like the Romans in the sense that like they're conquerors, um, but they do bring a, a kind of order, a law and order in a sense to um, these more sort of disparate and wild kingdoms. So um, I guess, it, you know, it's sort of depends on your pers perspective whether you think they're like the evil empire or if you think they're you know some kind of force for good in the world that sort of brings order and enlightenment to places with their you know propaganda and their standardization of of things across the the continent um which is in a which is kind of why, you know, part of the reason why I like this, the politics and the world building here so much is because um, nothing's really cut and dried. Um, the Nilfgaardians are kind of, like, they're, they're kind of demonized and they're considered the bad guys by a lot of people. But, like, Geralt, you know, technically I guess Geralt is, like, a northerner and not, not a Nilfgaardian. He's sort of from the north originally. Um, but, you know... 
The Northerners have always kind of scorned him. He's always been an outsider and an outcast of sorts, so he really doesn't have allegiance to any particular country or kingdom or political group or religious group or anything like that. His only allegiance is to the Witchers, and they're thoroughly apolitical. Um, so, of course, you can get involved in politics, and the second game was all about politics, too. Um, it was, a call, of course, called Assassins of Kings for a reason. Um, and it sort of involved Geralt sort of getting thrown into politics kind of against his will <laughs> um, and against his better judgment and being forced to, um, you know, sort of being forced into the middle of, of a conflict, a political conflict, um, and kind of having to take some sides there. Um, but again, here I think this is going to be a little bit more about um, Geralt's sort of personal quest, so... Hopefully it should be interesting. Let's see if we can talk to this guy and find him. Uh, we'll find this guy and say hello, maybe. Have a nice it's chat. It's raining, it's pouring, and Promir's snoring. He bumped his head when he went to bed and uh -oh. wet himself the morning. Alright, uh, I know. I know how to summon my horse. Who taught you that? Do I need to though? Now listen carefully. You're never to sing that rhyme again. Never. And you're not to play. Well. Looking for trouble. Do I need it though? I don't know. Where am I going? Where is this guy that I'm talking to? Now if I current position. He's over in the ransacked village, which is... Okay, where am I? Okay. Well, let's go to the bridge. Because that is a fast travel marker. Wosong Bridge. So named because of a girl who once would stand on the bridge and sing, waiting for her beloved's return. Let's go to the bridge. And, um... Hit the fast the travel told me about the Smith boy. to the ransacked oh, village. Missing one day, so folks Sorry. That was hunting I can't decide. Him here's a, here's <laughs> our fast <laughs> travel marker. <laughs> fast travel. Okay. So. We need to... Right there. Awesome! Nice. Okay. So we gotta find this guy, Dune. Rosai. Well, um. Oh, hello there, fella. Oh, he has a doggy. Aw, doggy. Do that often? Talk to your dog? It's my brother's, <laughs> Bastion's. But. Guess he's mine now. Aww. See? Bastion fought the Black Ones in a battle, just outside the village. I haven't had word of him since. I told him, do like I did, lose a finger or two so they won't recruit you. Too damn afeard he was. Bloody hell. I'd walk the battlefield if I were you. I did. Sea of corpses. And corpses feeding. Someone told me they're afeard of fire, so I took a torch, tried to chase them off. Poor shite, I tell you. Would have ended up eaten alive if it weren't for Hussar here. Listen, guessing you carry those swords for more than show. Come with me. Keep the ghouls off. Help me find Bastion and I'll pay you well. Yeah, of course. Fine, I'll help you. I basically Just do every quest, so... Been a few days since the battle. Chances we find your brother alive are slim. Very slim. Who would have thought? But I want to find his body at least. So Bastion don't rot there in the sun with the black ones. Meet me on the hill overlooking the battlefield. We'll move on together from there. Okay. Awesome. Well, I'm going to take a little break here, and then uh, we'll be back, and we'll find this guy's brother, or see if we can find this guy's brother.